welcome to episode 13 of the Tap Haven podcast. Oh, no. Uh, cancel it. Unlucky. Bye. We're out of uh, here. Bye, guys. It's just oh, like 13. the old, old oh, hotel episodes. Oh, take. oh, no. Oh, oh, no. oh no. I have the oh, no. uh, I have the title for this one then. The title. <laughs> the episode that got away. The episode that got away. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, never mind. We already started. <laughs> but how have y'all been? How's y'all's week going? How was your weekends, Anthony? Week weekend uh, was terrible. What? Why? What terrible. happened? Terrible. Don't buy a Tesla. Oh, oh okay. Wait a Do second. Not. That's this that's a, a strong a opinion. Yeah. Do not buy a Tesla unless you live very close oh. to a service station. Because Oh, that's right. Yeah. I got screwed this weekend yeah. and I, I shared this with my boss. He also got screwed recently. Hey. He lives two hours away from the nearest yeah. service station. I live two and a half hours, if you're lucky, like <laughs> that's a good time, uh, maybe three to four hours away from the nearest service station. And we got a crack at our windshield. And so we had to <laughs> take it in because we call up. Uh, the insurance company, they're like, oh, these people will come to you. They'll fix your glass for you. We're like, oh, thank God. We didn't. Now we don't have to drive so far. Yeah. Uh, They call us back. They're like, we can't get the glass. You have to try someone else. Insurance people get us with the next people. They call me back and they go, we can't get the glass. And my manager told me to tell you that you're just going to have to go straight to them because they won't talk to us. They won't give anybody glass. They won't let anybody Touch on the car and it's like oh, wait, wow. wait a second there are literally like certified body shops for tesla why why do we have certified body shops but not like certified glass shops well so we ended up going the long trip to charlotte north carolina huge trip and we take both cars which means uh my truck and the tesla because they told us we can't give you a loaner vehicle and we can't oh. give you a uh, Same day. Uber oh. credits. They used to give Uber credits. They don't yeah, do that yeah. anymore either. So we're like, okay, well, we're not going to sit there for three to four hours that it's supposed to take. But we messaged oh, them. We asked them. The same day, though. Okay, good. We Well, okay. yeah. And, and we said, are you sure? Can you guarantee it'll be done same day? Because we have dogs and we got to get here and get back. And it's a long trip. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we, we guarantee it's going to be done same day. So, you know, we bring the truck. We're like, we'll go to Ikea. Maybe we'll get something big and we'll make it worth it. I don't know. You know. <laughs> We're making a big trip out of it. Oh, man. (laughs) Yeah. And so, you know, we go to Chick-fil-A. We're having a good old time. And um, mistakes were made. Yeah, we get there. And, well, the glass guy doesn't work on the weekend. How didn't they? How did they not tell you this before you left the house? Like, apparently, a robot told us it was okay. A oh robot, my gosh. an automated system told us it was okay, didn't catch it. The lady we talked to, she's like, I wasn't working that day that you scheduled all this. I'm uh, usually the one that catches okay. this. And I'm like, okay, well, you didn't. Um, and so I know. they give us a You're loaner vehicle. But guess what? Off the record, she tells me the only other people that can do your glass is Safe Flight. And I wouldn't recommend it because they mess up all the time. And then you end up in uh, here trying to fix what they messed up. And that's what happened to Kirk. Kirk drove two uh, or not drove two hours. He scheduled a glass repair just like me. They said no. They wouldn't do it. No. So he had to go to someone else. Then his climate system started getting all out of whack. So he had to go and get that done. And while doing it, they say, oh, it looks like this was caused by the recent uh, glass repair. He's like, okay, so uh, yeah, fix it. And y'all are paying for it because y'all are supposed to do the glass repair and y'all refused. And they say no. So he, they should have been the ones paying for that because it's their own fault that they weren't the ones to do it right. But no. So now, you know, we got to take another trip down there. And meanwhile, they're telling us, uh, you got to bring the loaner vehicle back within 24 hours or you're going to incur fees. I'm like, what? I'm like, what is happening, dude? This is nonsense. It is a six to eight hour drive on the weekday when there's traffic. Uh, we both work normal jobs. We, we can't just drive down on a Monday or Tuesday. And they were difficult all day Monday, like all day. I'm like being very kind. I'm like, guys, can you like make an exception since your system failed and put us in this predicament? And, and they like ignore me. And, and I go and like, 
thank you. Could you please respond to the other questions that I've asked? And eventually they finally talk to their manager and they're like, okay, just uh, make sure you make the payment and then we'll mark it, it as you've given us the, the loaner vehicle back in the system so you don't get charged. And I'm like, thank you. We really appreciate that. But man, why did we have to go through this? Why wasn't uh, that the first like the first thing you did? And so and I and I did ask I asked them about it on Saturday when we were there, but the manager wasn't there, so I wasn't gonna like press the right. thing about like, yo, you, you gotta let us come back on the weekend. Like this is this, this is, is ridiculous. A little ridiculous. So yeah, like if you live near Tesla service station, there's still good cars and and probably the yeah, they might not be the best EV anymore because they used to be the best EV because of the charging network. But guess what? Ford is, coming is, is now mm -hmm. on the same charging network and so many others are coming to it. So mm -hmm. Hyundai is it, coming over. Yeah. The only problem is, though, and I, Eric, I don't know. You told me about this last time you visited. You, I was like, you know, these other cars are coming under the same network. So I'm just thinking of probably saving it up for an EV within that branch so i can go ahead and get the same chargeability with uh not as much as a price tag but you said something and i don't remember but if you want to speak to that oh yeah so it it, it depends a lot on the lawsuits and i haven't kept up with this in a few months so my my data might be out of date at this point but at least the last time i looked into it there are all these lawsuits going through where they're essentially saying, hey, you got to allow us to use this network. Mm. And a lot of those are starting to pass. However, Tesla can still charge for you to use that network, and they don't have to use the same pricing model for every car across the board. Or at least so they didn't the last time I checked. Now this is where I'd have to do some research Scummy. again and like No 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 hold on hold on before we get up in arms about Tesla Jerry Rig everything just did a video about being able to charge with the Ford and he goes over the fact that at the charger he went to it's 33 cents per kilowatt hour for his mom's Tesla at the same mm -hmm. charger and it's 45 cents a 33% upcharge for his Ford to do it but he himself says now before we get up in arms about this I checked the nearest charger I can't remember the company like right down the street is charging 55 cents per kilowatt hour so, so yes it's, it's still a deal it's still yeah, yeah, yeah. better on Tesla so it's like yeah it's a uh, I, mm. Say what you will. I, it, it's neat that they're being cheaper than the other guys because I've, I've owned an EV for a long time now. And when I go, whenever I see another EV charger, I'm curious. Like, oh, what's the price of that? And I click on the button to tell me the price. Like, whoa, that is outrageous. Like, what? Oh, I'm not, uh, no, I'm not doing that. Anthony, we had to charge in the middle of Virginia recently, and it was one of the charge point stations. And the charge yeah. point stations, you can essentially treat it like. A, a, a McDonald's or something like that, where it, essentially you as a store owner or a location owner can no buy way. the charge point and charge whatever, charge whatever you want <laughs> no and way. then set up some percentage of that goes back to charge point. That's nuts. <clears throat> and nope. we, we had to pay, we, we had to charge it up to, to get out of this small town. Oh no. And no! so... We had to sit there and charge for like seven hours or something because it's only an oh. L2 charger. So, yeah, all that kind and of how, stuff. What was the what was the bill on that? I think it was like sixty eight dollars or something like that. Jesus oh! Christ, oh! Yeah. dude! And what's crazy is like on the other end of the spectrum, we've been to uh, I think it was Eric. Is it Tybee Island? I keep saying Jekyll Island. Tybee, yep, Tybee. Tybee Island has two chargers, and when people are at the beach at the island there's no parking spots and yeah. we were like oh man there's a there's a charging spot it's like a level two charger or maybe level one like eric's talking about only like seven kilowatts i think was like maybe the thing and it it was cheaper for us to sit there and charge in that parking spot than it was to buy for parking <clears throat> which was full you couldn't buy parking so right. we're like yes but the spot next to us was a level like three charger uh, which, or maybe it was level two. It really wasn't that fast, but it was like 10 times the price, maybe, maybe 20. And I was just like, 
uh, no. Me there, boss. <laughs> we're uh, we're not <clears throat> doing that. No. Now, I will yeah. say, little life hack for anybody that's going to Dollywood. At mm. Dollywood, they have charging spots. They're the closest parking spot to the park. Dude. And they cost less than the other parking lot that you can do. So you have to still pay for the parking to get into the park, of course. But it's but you like get close. you get princess parking. You get princess parking on a cheaper lot, essentially. And you're like right next to the gate. Mm. And so it costs so much less and you get the front parking spot. And if you get there when they open, you're going to be the first EV there. There, there aren't that many EVs going every day. So, okay, dude. <clears throat> and to your point about, I think charge point it is. IKEA has chargers nowadays, right? And it was really awesome. My mom went to IKEA in Atlanta, and it was free, and she got a really good parking spot, like you're talking about. We looked for that at IKEA in Charlotte. Uh, it was hard to find, but we found it while we were walking in. Oh, okay. And I go to check the price. Not free. Very much not free. It was like 54 mm. cents per kilowatt. And I was like, no. Jeez. We got to go. <laughs> That's gotta insane. Go. We're not doing that. And luckily, like <clears throat> to Tesla's credit, with the loaner vehicle, supercharging is free. So they're not making us pay for that, which is nice. But That's like... Good. Man, their their service Sucks. is gotten so bad, Sucks. and I mean, the only other thing that they still probably have on most people, I know Eric might not agree so much, is just the autopilot. If you go on a lot of long trips or you're in traffic a lot of, all the time on the highway, it is incredible. When I was uh, in an hour plus long traffic every single day in Atlanta, I went from being exhausted when I would get home from work to having so much energy that I was annoying my wife because the car was doing 99% of the drive. Look, I am all for the autopilot too. I just, for me personally, the auto steer gets me 99% of the way there. And it just makes the autopilot, especially when it's a subscription based model, not worth it. Can you use that auto steer on normal streets? Yeah. Like not the in- interstate? Like, yeah. What about like the windy streets in the mountains? It works. It work? It's the exact same system as the autopilot, essentially. Oh, okay. So did I, you use I used it. Houston? Yeah. I used it while I was in Houston. Anthony, did you drive autopilot while you were in Houston? Yes. You did? Probably. What was your, what was your experience? Um, scary. But it's gotten better. Mm -hmm. But it's gotten better. I think that might have been before it had full self-driving. This was whenever we were at the townhouse? Yeah. I think I still had to do all turns. Now it does its own turns. And, like, the weird thing is when you get used to it, you're like, you're like, I know what kind of people are driving and that it's learning from, and they're not me. They're not good drivers. <laughs> it's mm. like it's learning how to drive from the average driver who is I will kind take of this into account. Kind I will of fast. Take this into account. Yeah, like it used to be able to. You used to be able to tell it to stay between one and seven cars behind another car. Now it's got like aggressive, average, and chill mode. Put it in chill mode. It'll be like <laughs> up someone's butt, and I'm like. Oh, wow. This is dangerous. What are we doing? Wait, how is chill up somebody? No, never mind. I don't want to know. I don't, I don't know, know, man. <laughs> it's it's really great. It, it 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 it's amazing technology, but you know it's mm-hmm. still in the works. And I really wish that they would hire or certify people like me, or especially chauffeurs, professional drivers, to take more. Uh, you know, data from them and heavily weight it mm. to shape certain driver profiles. But you're, you know what? This is an entire different topic that I'm just not going to dive into just yet. Yeah. But yeah. You're in terms of data. It's a little bit of a. Fa- it's a little difficult to generate those kinds of results with the driver that you want. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. But I so- have considered getting an EV. And now that I've gotten, I've got my answer from Anthony and then I got my answer from Eric and now I've got my answer from Anthony again. And now I'm like pro EV again. So (laughs) I I will say though, Anthony has convinced me if, especially with the, what I would consider failure from the cyber truck, if you're looking for a truck and an EV, that new Mm -hmm. Ram hybrid Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not even a hybrid technically. 
it's, yeah, it it's, nice. it's it's a it uses so, it, it's technically an EV, but it has a gas section. Generator. Yeah, that will generate electricity They're to fill back up the bu battery. There is, no, there is no link between that engine, because yeah. generators are engines, <clears throat> and the drivetrain. Yeah, and, and it doesn't amazing. have to use it either. So it only uses yeah. it when it it needs to use it at a certain point. So if you were to always keep it filled up to a certain degree, it'll never use the gas that's in the car. Yeah. But on a road trip or especially towing, yeah, bam, now suddenly you've got like two, like not two, sorry, you have Dude. like 200 kilowatt hours or maybe more. I can't remember yeah. what they said, but you might actually have a chance of being comparable to my diesel truck when towing mm. an RV or something yeah, else across the country. But right I now, this thing. it's yeah. it is dope. It's probably one of the coolest trucks. Oh, on the market oh, uh -huh. and the, the the biggest thing is ram only makes trucks yeah mm -hmm. so, so they have the truck thing. game yeah this is their thing yeah. they're doing their statistics and their testing that they use that for tag? Uh, i think it's at like 60 right yeah that checks out for a ram i'm i'm sorry guys anything outside of 50 right now for anybody who's living in the real world is like almost unfeasible because it's like what you're adding asking for a hundred four hundred fifty dollar uh bill on top of everything for a monthly payment it's crazy yeah. well but like well i mean there's two That's things I, I don't know the price but you know it, there's always the uh, ev incentives from the for the tax yeah. rebate yeah but then yeah. there's also a huge factor in comparing it to your existing vehicle and mm. suddenly not paying for gas yeah right it's huge. yeah and, it's and like, especially for a truck it's a lot Oh, that, depending on the mileage on that thing, it's it's a complete game changer in terms of people who use their truck a lot. Yeah. My week has been OK. Uh, I've been currently. I've been waiting for an answer to a possible opportunity for a job for about three days, maybe four. No, three days. This is day three. <clears throat> and I'm losing my mind <laughs> so oh, in order to distract myself i am now selling my uh fender telecaster so if anybody is watching the podcast and is a guitarist and wants a nice fender tele american deluxe it is listed somewhere for you to find it's it's my baby it's really nice and if you want it please take it because i'm I, I have no things to do anymore I am currently, this is what I'm doing now, but after this, I do not know what I'm going to do. I have nothing to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll still have a guitar, right? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I have like 15. I have like, like, no, I don't have 15. Row. Shut up, Eric. I have, let's see, one. I have two official guitars right now. If I'm, if I'm giving up this one, I have a seven string and I have a six string. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But yeah, that's how my week's been going. Eric, you? Yeah, my week's been really good. I am super sore. Uh, I had another judo tournament this past weekend. And Get yeah. No, it was I saw that. I saw the video. I was like, look at our boy. Oh, look at him. Look at our boy. He did it. He did the thing. Yeah, no, I it was a, it was a really good weekend. I felt really good about it. My only my team it, it it's the judo tournament that we do here is different than any other judo tournament in the world that I know of in the sense that Josh, the guy who runs it, wants to bring in the team chemistry into judo. So each state can go in and build teams where they have a fighter in each weight class and you can have you can bring a number of teams. You bring them and then you do a tournament, but it's team versus team. So even if I win my match, if everybody else loses on my team, then we lose that match overall. Guys, mm. guys, guys, Josh is turning judo into an auto battler. I know. Dude, himself. yes, he is into the auto battler. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> I know this guy. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he's turning it into an auto battle, and man, <laughs> and then he yells at you, Eric, dude, Eric, Eric, why do the you thing? Do the thing. <laughs> Does do his little thing. hands. Damn yep. it, Eric. 
break. If only I was in there, but it's an auto battle or something. Yeah. <laughs> My econ is trash. It's over. It's over. <laughs> That's hilarious. I gold on Eric. Damn it. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. I hate these counter strats are so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> He's turning it into his own judo auto battler. Yeah, he is. It's a, it's essentially an auto battler and <gasps> it was it was super fun and of course we had people all over the country. We had like 10 state different states that competed and uh Georgia ended up taking first, second and third in each of the big divisions. Uh, so all of our teams uh, won, essentially. And then my team placed third overall, which means only two teams there beat us, technically. Hmm. Nice. And uh, it was a good weekend for me. I, I only fought black and brown belts, and I won against pretty much all of them. And the two that I lost I were really weird. It were really weird losses. One of them, we have the video, and everybody I've talked to was like, dude, you landed on your stomach, but the ref called it as I landed on my back. But I landed with both my elbows like this on the ground directly. And so Confusing. nobody nobody knows why. One of my senseis when I came off was like, you got robbed. Like, I don't understand what happened. Like, you landed like on your stomach. And Josh even went over and was about to say something, but he was like, Ooh. he was like, no, I can't. If, if I start trying to overturn the calls, they're going to overturn it because it's me. And that's not oh, yeah, all that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he, it, it was a, it was a weird case, but I, mm. I felt really good in that match. We were tied up until that point in the points that we got. And then the other one, I made a huge error. So I lost because of an error, but an error, you say? Yeah, we were on the ground, and in judo, you have the gi that you're wearing, and if the gi goes underneath your chin, you can choke him with the gi. But if the mm. gi is on top of your face, you can't just crush their face with the gi. The reason okay. being is that it it takes no skill to do that, and mm. technically, I don't ever have to tap for that. Like it's just painful. But there are a lot of people who would just give up due to the pain rather than the technique. So they could just sit there and make your life miserable for four minutes. And there's not much you could do about it once they're in that position, but they could never kill you with that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they don't give points for that. So what they do is technically the refs stop the match just like they do in other scenarios and they make you start back up, standing up. You, you keep going. Well, he had it across my face for about five seconds. And I heard Josh saying, hey, he's got it across the geese, across the face, across the face, ref. And then I thought I heard the ref talk. Mm. So I assumed mm. he said mate, but I couldn't hear him because he's behind the guy very well. So I loosened up. And when I loosened up, he grabbed my arm and put me into an arm bar. And then I had to tap, and there was nothing, nothing I could do once he had the arm. But I thought Dude, he said that, stop. The best piece of uh, self-defense advice uh, people can get that don't know self-defense, just tap out. If that person that's attacking you has any training, they're going to loosen tap their up for a second because they're going to be trained to be like, oh, we're done. Yeah. You know? So sure. I'd hope that most people that have been trained aren't going to be, you know, jerks about it. And the next thing is Eric is either going to buy or has already bought this Amazon uh, tuning fork and other things set because he thinks he might have a minor fracture. And oh, as I told him valid. earlier this that's week, valid. every martial artist needs a tuning fork because when you have a minor fracture, you just bang that tuning fork, you touch it to that bone, and if it hurts really bad, well, guess what? You're right. Yeah. You have to yeah. go to the doctor. Your terrible luck and in injuries and sicknesses has made you such a sad demonstration of necessary knowledge. I'm so sorry. <laughs> He's like, I have broken everything, so I know everything. So I know. <laughs> I've actually... I and that is right. I have been injured for the majority of my life through mm -hmm. random different injuries, but I have never broken a bone and I'm looking for some wood to knock on. Yeah. Please I don't break a fucking bone. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I have, I have actually not broken a bone either. However, I have cracked bones. 
Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't know if my nose, I have like a bump on my nose that my mom noticed. I didn't even realize it was there, but in boxing, I think someone gave me a minor fracture and I uh, come home yeah. from, from school once and she's like, what happened to your nose? And I'm like, what, what happened to my nose? She's like, there's a bump. I'm like, your perfect nose is not perfect anymore. And I'm oh, like, no. perfect nose. You're no longer you my boy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, you need to stop doing this boxing. I'm like, dad boxed. She's like, stop boxing. You have braces. They're going to uh, uh, shoot through your mouth. I was genuinely worried about that. I had a freaking mouthpiece that was made for braces. It didn't really help that much. I wouldn't <laughs> think so. It's braces, dude. What yeah. are you talking about? Yeah, uh, after I got a few cuts on the inside of the mouth against the braces, I switched from boxing to hep keto, and I was happier for it. Oh, yeah. Mm. I can, I can, that's the worst. I've seen some gnarly injuries, even with mouth guards no. from braces. Oh, man. It's going to be a no there, boss. Yeah. There's also just the problem, like, there's certain types of people that will go to certain types of martial arts. So some people just want to mm. fight. They're not trying to learn. They want to beat someone up and not get in trouble for it. And that's mm -hmm. not okay. That's dangerous. Like, you don't do Super that with other people dangerous. trying to learn, you know? Oh. No. No. Yeah. No. So, uh, you know, I was going to I was gonna say, I wonder if we should start, like, tasting while we're talking yeah yeah it's been yeah. a great example so, of that because we're doing a great job talking welcome. but we're not tasting yes <laughs> so <laughs> welcome to the tap haven podcast where we try to find the best drinks and games wait, 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 wait. and we occasionally drink whiskey <laughs> and we occasionally drink whiskey so today this is a it, i will say investigating this whiskey may have been one of the most interesting journeys that I have done while investigating a whiskey because so this is a Jim Beam product. So Beam and Centauri mm -hmm. and they have a website that takes you through all of the different things about your particular bottle by putting the code into their site. Oh cool. So this is the Baker's Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, and y'all will actually get to see a label in the right direction from my screen now, audience. Although Nat and Anthony do not get to see it in the correct direction because Discord. Ah, we're breaking. So ah. <laughs> I must say, so I went ahead and poured mine a little early because somewhere I saw that for some alcohols, supposedly letting it breathe is a thing. Yeah. Uh, so. I already sniffed it, and oh my god. But so, I do wonder if y'all sniff it, and you're like, I don't know. Which yeah. might be the difference. I haven't sniffed it yet. Ooh. I just poured it. Ooh, it's a... Nat, sniff that. Sniff yeah, it, that. It, it's pretty nice on the Stuff. nose. Is it, is it overpowering, Nat? Or is it I wonderful? I say... <laughs> <laughs> this it is out. very <laughs> vanilla. I just like... it. it Yes. Oh, it's yeah, very vanilla. vanilla. Very so vanilla. I, it's not there anymore, but on the first whiff, my brain was so confused. I thought I smelled like perfume, but not perfume that's like, oh, I can't drink that, you know? like <laughs> It's it's very fragrant. Yeah. Like, it, it has it, a guess... lot going on. It has a lot of baking spices, a lot of vanilla, a little bit of wood, but it really reminds me of somebody baking a vanilla pastry not a cake per se it's not that sugary but some type of vanilla pastry like a cookie like i'm telling you yeah like a some... croissant or something i'd love to ask a professional because this is the second time the second week in a row where changing where my nose is changes what i smell and i swear there is a certain position where i get a whiff of cologne and then in Plus other you positions get, you get that Closer yeah, you, closer you get to the to it, the closer you get to that. It's the wood, I think. Oh, and by the way, I did spend some time trying a little bit more red breast in this past week to see if I could smell Mimic. what Eric does or whatever. Uh -huh. And I think for a brief moment, I did. Okay, but not enough. I wish not enough. I could experience it more. I wish this is when we need that like Neuralink stuff that I don't actually want. So I, can, I don't want the surgery, oh. but yeah, I just want Eric to be able to like mm. deliver his experience and what he smells and tastes. 
So I'd be like, oh yeah, that is good. Just not for me. But you get it good. <laughs> That's quite the challenge. Oh. All right, oh, these guys wow. are tasting it. What do y'all? Yeah, what do y'all the, think? the the first go down is really cool, and I'll I'll talk it's a little really bit about cool. it. Cool. But I'm gonna I'm gonna and let they- y'all sit on this one just a second because man. There is more to go over about this whiskey than any other whiskey because of all the information that I was able to get. Mm. So, do tell. Yeah. Mm, yes. mm. <laughs> so, Don't leave uh, us waiting. Yeah, so, mm, can't leave the ladies. For <laughs> example, <laughs> normally you can kind of see just from the the the, the bottle, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, single barrel, one hundred seven proof. Seven year. That means the the earliest it could be it was a seven year. Our bottle that we have, our barrel, is exactly seven years and ten months. Oh. It is seventy five percent corn, thirteen percent rye, and twelve percent malted barley in the mash bill. Okay. It was okay. on the. Uh, so you can see on the top exactly which warehouse and stuff that it was in but it was on floor two rack five of the rick house and the okay. weather and placement inside of the rick house like affects the proof flavor time that it needs to age every floor has its own distinct flavor profile the higher yeah, the floor that, for, for those that don't know these these rick houses i don't know if they're always called rick houses but the, where you age your bourbon barrels is open air Typically, there are some really cool companies that are fully controlling their environment now, but most of them is just a really giant barn house that's like seven stories tall and, and they let all of the weather come through. You know, I mean, not the rain and stuff, but the different levels of humidity, the different particles in the air, it's all going through. And there's a huge difference in the level of heat and atmosphere on floor seven versus floor two. And it's really cool. Continue, Eric. Yeah, yeah. which by the way, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it pull it up. But we actually know what the temperature graph and the humidity graph is That's from this experience. What? Yeah, so so our barrel was filled in December 2015, aged for seven years, ten months. The highest temp that it experienced was 101 degrees. And it pretty much went on this journey of going back to about 95 to right close to zero almost every year in temperature. The coldest it was was negative five degrees Fahrenheit with a 9% humidity. So really cool that it has all this statistics to do it. But for people who don't know, essentially... The top floors tend of uh, this Rick House tend to produce spicier bourbons. They have a little bit more kick to them, a little bit more edge. But as you kind of go down a little bit, the the flavors tend to get more smooth and robust and vanilla like. And so, funnily enough, our baker's bottle was a little bit lower than most of the other baker's bottles, which I think is attributing to this vanilla flavor Mm. and smell that we're getting a little bit more than general. And they even have a flavor profile graph that shows the base bakers that they're trying to mix for. And ours, our bottle is going to have a little bit more vanilla, oak, and charred oak than the normal bottle of Baker's. This is literally the min maxer of all bourbons. And it's it's crazy. <laughs> and I just imagine some guy with the knobs behind just going, like, yes, like this. Uh, yes, <laughs> so get the bourbon. Humid- now take the humidity all the way up. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Is it is it old Forrester that's doing that with the um ter- uh, the climate controlled? There are a few now. So Old Forester has a few floors that are fully climate controlled that they're controlling. Mm. We had one of those bottles. Bardstown is doing it in its entirety. Seriously. Yeah. They are, their oh, rickhouses yeah. are the new like 
Uh, top of the line. Yeah, they caught. They were like, I I don't know how much per rickhouse, but I think it's millions of dollars per rickhouse that they spent, and they're they can be fully climate controlled at Bardstown That's if insane. I if I remember correctly. But yeah, it's nuts because I mean Eric and I I think stopped by Bardstown on we our did. way out of the bourbon trail so sad back I home. missed it yeah you'll, you'll, we'll take you there um and you know when tab haven goes on tour yeah uh, i would <laughs> love to tour that distillery by the way it's so like anthony and i got went into like the lobby and had some snacks and some bourbons but it was so i would good. love to tour the rick house there Mm-hmm. It is. There's so many, and they're huge. Yeah, they're giant. Like they are like seven stories a piece, and that's a lot to climate control. I mean, didn't we go to Heaven's Door, and it was like Angels five, Envy? Like yeah, Angels Envy. We went. They had a bunch. I, yeah, Angels Envy. I know, but like, then like, where did we go? Where we met our friend? Uh, oh, oh, that was um the was that? Stitzel yeah. and was Weller. Dis- no, Stitzel and Weller. Stitzel they and do. Weller. And Weller. Okay. They do the blade they and do, bow. And mm, the, that's what it is. The IW Harper are the two that Got they you. do. Okay. We had a but, we had a love hate relationship with that distillery because we were like, oh, this bl- this uh the blade and key key and bl- what the, I blade, the blade and bow. And key. Blade, blade and, bow. and yeah. bow. We're like, oh, that's cool. That's sick. And then Nat and I go and start reading about it, and we're like. Uh, we should not have read the story, no. About it. No, we but then, read the story. but then after that, we met uh, <laughs> an amazing bartender and musician and stuff like that. So then we're back on the on the hype train for Stitzel and yep. Weller. Yep. Yeah, he's we, the he's the man. Uh, if I have oh, shoot, I'm gonna look up his name. I was about quick, to say, let's let's shout out. It, it, look up his thing. He has a guitar company. We should shout them out. Mm. Um, he does really cool work. They actually just released a new line of guitars. I think. And it, it's gonna it, be a while. It's Keep cool going. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, I got you. He'd be proud of our man Nat. He told us a great story about his uh, yeah. employer giving him like a really nice and expensive and rare bottle of of bourbon, and uh, it lasted the weekend with him and his girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, nice. since then, I I, I think uh, Nat has been like, that is a way to live. That is I'm the living. way, man. It is <laughs> the, the way. way. No. He texted us the other day. He's like, I'm about to buy this, and it's not last until okay, tomorrow. Look, look. <laughs> you guys got to stop b- dropping stuff in my text thinking that I'm going to go ahead and just not do anything. All right? I'm an impulse buyer. I buy That's things funny. because they make me feel good sometimes. It's so funny. The other day, the what is it? Sealbox? Is Sealbox the online mm-hmm. liquor mm-hmm. store, basically? They send me a text. They're like, oh, we've got bottled and bond sale. You get free shipping. I'm like, oh, okay. I know from the freaking museum that taught us how to drink. They were like, if it's bottled and bond, it's good. That's just right. how it yeah. is. High quality. It, yeah. yeah. It's got There's the tax certain parameters yeah. that make it Gregory James. Good. Greg James, it's Greg. What's, Greg. What is it's, old, it's Greg, Greg? What is what is his guitar company that he works so he's, for? So it's not his company. So I know, Vola I know, it's guitar, not his. But Vola Guitars. I know, I, I know the yeah. band. Vola Guitars is the is the brand the uh, line of guitars that he uh, does work for, and they have like been really good to him and have sent him like guitars for him to like play, um, and they just recently made like a custom piece for him. I think it's like a, I think it's a, um, a, uh, st- traditional strat on a, uh, strat body and it's, it's super slick, <clears throat> but that guy was awesome. Uh, I, what, I was thinking, cool. what shirt was I wearing? I don't know what I was wearing, but he was like, oh, Dude, you, you were, fit. you were wearing the, and I know was it contortionist. It was the contortionist. Yeah. Yeah. So we got we geeked out super hard, and I think that was probably my favorite mo- moment of the entire thing. Even though like we had like great bourbon the entire time, yeah, it was the first time that I experienced what you're supposed to do with bourbon. You're supposed to sit down with friends, share and, like, experiences, and yeah, yeah, like it's, like it's the entire communal uh, experience. Bourbon tastes amazing, and but drinking with people and sharing experiences with a style of drink. It cannot exist without the flavors that alcohol and proof adds to it mm-hmm. is what makes it so unique and special to me, at least. Mm-hmm. Can't do a juice. Yeah. Oh, and like the coolest thing is um, 
you know, having a bourbon by yourself, you might not notice the nuances. Yeah. But then when someone says, oh, this reminds me of slash tastes like uh, cookies, you're like, whoa, I didn't even notice that. It does that to us all the time. Yeah. And w- it's- watchers and listeners. We don't know anything. We wait for Eric to say something, and then we're like, "Yeah, I saw that too." Yeah. Oh yeah. man. But yeah. So the other day, I send a link to these two, being like, "Yo, Bottle and Bonds on sale," and guess what? New Riff is there, and New Dude, Riff don't... is like the first thing that was like, yeah. "This is amazing." He gave it five stars on everything. It's Eric so good. Said that Mark saw that, and he's like, "Nat." We're going downstairs, and I'm buying you a bottle of that right now. 100%. And he did. <laughs> and that yeah. thing was dead by the time we, we left. Yeah, we and killed we, that <laughs> bottle. We killed that no, bottle. Sorry, we didn't kill it on the on the bachelor party. We killed it on the wedding on the uh, wedding weekend. Like that yeah. thing was there, and then it oh, was yeah. gone. Oh, oh, so good. I'm going to be buying another one. I found out what it is. It is the new riff uh, single barrel. Single, single barrel. barrel select barrel proof yes the barrel proof is important but it is a single barrel select barrel proof it was a store pick Mm -hmm. yeah from the the people at the museum yeah Yeah. by the people who start the bourbon trail in kentucky so when you go to kentucky and you start the bourbon trail there is a museum that you go to Mm -hmm. i believe it's called um and that we are doing that someday and you're picking. Doing the trick, doing the trip. We'll we see. are going to New Riff. I, or, the thing is, are, you are picking that barrel. Is, yeah. Listeners, and, and you're getting a barrel to take home. Look, look, <laughs> I don't care what they do. I just know that no matter what they do, as long as they are doing some something like that, because I've had their single barrel select that they sell in stores. It's nowhere close for me, flavor wise. It just, it just not, it doesn't. It doesn't hearken to the flavors and the general experience that I got from the from the uh, first bottle. I have found it now. If you buy it from me out from under the site that I found it, I'll find you (laughs) and I'll beat you with the bottle. (laughs) Oh, because because I need it. I need it. That being said, I've also I think that this has been my gateway of just buying uh, alcohol that I know that sounds good. Um, I went to a bar recently. Actually, I have a bunch of stories to go along with this whole bourbon thing. Uh, I went to a bar to do a whole uh, work meetup thing because they were telling me about a possible job uh, opportunity. And they had a Heaven's Door straight bourbon on the at the top. And I was like, that logo looks really cool. And it's at the top, so it must be good, right? So I got it. Didn't realize it was twenty dollars. I was like, "That's a really expensive pour. This better be awesome." And it was good, but it wasn't like incredible. So I looked up the bottle, and it's only a sixty dollars bottle. I was like, "You mean to tell me I can have maybe like fifteen, maybe twenty shots of this for like a fraction of the price?" Oh yeah, you evil little conniving people! How dare you? Which so. I found out. Don't go to bars tr- to try bourbon. Go no. to your oh, friend's no. house, no. especially your friend's because house. they like never have a Glen Cairn. You can't like no really appreciate it with the a only, open glass. The only edge case to that is if you have a bar, and you you kind of got to do the math for this one. If you have a bar that has access to bottles that you simply will never be able to mm-hmm. get on your own. So, mm-hmm. for example, antique oh. collection, special editions, yeah, s- stuff like that. Four Roses limited edition releases. We have, we have, we have a bar like that in Houston yeah. called the, um, uh, I think it's the Watch Factory or something like that. It's something yeah. about watches. I don't remember, but I haven't been yet. <laughs> because even if you go there and you're like, okay, I'm going to spend $100 on a pour of this bottle. If that bottle's worth... Two point five thousand dollars or some nonsense. You're, you're like, never getting it. and and then finding it is also going to be an issue. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, I just want to try this. I don't need a bottle of it. I just want to know what it tastes like. Find mm-hmm. a place where you're getting a pretty good deal on it, and then fifty dollar pour. You know. Yeah, and and <laughs> feel okay about that. But outside of that, I entirely agree. Yeah, yeah, so there. don't go to don't go to bars. Um, I also uh, found out that there is a local place that it's not uh, not a chain of 
uh, a liquor still, uh, dispensary. So they they're just like a neighborhood um, place. And they weren't any of the places that I took you, Eric. There was like this other oh, nice. place that's actually closer to town. And I walked in and I was like, oh, they have like all the things that I want. OK. And some things mm-hmm. that I don't know about. So I grabbed some bottles there. So if you don't know about a like a neighborhood um spirits place that i don't know carries things that you're interested about i do the time i do the research for it because now that i know it's so much easier for me to just make this decision of okay i'm not going to total wine i refuse i'm just gonna go ahead and get this from wherever unless there unless it's a a um unless it's a bottle i cannot get anywhere else yeah. Dude, and, 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 and go to liquor stores where you can make friends, right? Like, oh, yeah, I, I haven't made friends with the people at my liquor store, but they're nice and, and just friendly. Mm-hmm. And I was checking out just this past week and the lady goes, have you tried this? Uh, this over oh, here? God, this and she's like, I'm not trying to get you to so spend strong. more money, but like it is so good. And I go and get it. And it's only thirty five bucks. And I'm like, thirty five bucks. And she says it's really good. And it's like a barrel proof barrel select what i was like oh uh, yeah yes i will try that we go home and try it and we're like That's this is good. the best 35 dollars i've ever spent oh my god you'll have to tell mm. us about that later. that is oh, a 35 dollar gonna... investment man even even <laughs> if you were into the whiskey game even if you don't like something if someone at the store recommends it and it's within your price range and you haven't had it before I heavily recommend to try these things out. Even if it's if not like up it, your flavor profile. Yeah, if you like it, you're going to be go super back and happy. Buy a whole six pack of it because yeah. now yeah. you can sell that for a thousand bucks. Oh year. my gosh. <laughs> There, that happens like that it's it's insane sometimes it drops and it's a huge flavor profile and yeah. then it vanishes off the shelves and people are like wait what did i miss what did yeah. i miss it's so funny. that's my story. Um, Dude. I have another story. Oh, here, wait. Tattooed. Oh, okay. So, oh, there we go. It's looking yeah. looking it's sexy. Fun. I like no, it. It's 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 done. This is done for now. At least. Beautiful. Um, but uh, while I was going there, I was like, "Oh, do I drink alcohol before?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, no, it fil- it thins your blood." And then I got to my tattoo artist and I asked, "Hey, like, so like you're not supposed to drink before a tattoo, right?" And she was like, "You could, you could get." actually pretty drunk before it starts affecting your blood to the point where it actually gets thin so like it's a, myth. Yeah. it's a myth it's a myth you have to be like to the point where you're falling over like you have to be like really mm. fucked up even then yeah. we're talking i mean the blood alcohol content is a parts per million yeah so you'd have to be pretty hammered for it to start making a significant a significant exactly. enough difference yeah but yeah to like finish the longest shortest story ever i text these guys that new riff and popcorn sutton oh. freaking uh bottled and bond on seal box nat goes guys i've spent my budget for the month not happening and then while i'm asleep i see the next morning that nat texts me okay i'll do the new riff <laughs> So, and so Look, I'm man, of the course, morning, trying to order it before it goes out of stock because the man. rest of them are going out of stock. <laughs> to- <sighs> I really wanted to go ahead and take a chance with some of them, though, because I, you can't get the red corn for the still Austin anymore. It's Wait. like I think it's like a yeah. major winner across the board for like a, a recent competition. You can't get it in Houston, in, in Texas, Dude. which is huge because it's it's made here. Dude, where, where did <laughs> you get Actually, I don't think is it made here? What is? We'll find I out. I would later. hope so. Where, Still Austin. But, oh but Matt, yeah. Where did yeah. where did you get your new riff uh, bottled in bond? Because I saw it was like fifteen dollars cheaper than on Sealbox. Yours was like total 60. wine. That was total wine. Oh man, word. I don't know if I have that. Total wine has it for like sixty bucks. I'm gonna go pick it up this weekend. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. Oh wait, that no, like... I can't pick it up this weekend because I'm going to New York uh, Saturday. So no, nope, never mind. Fancy. I'm gonna have to get it on. I have to get it on this Friday. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe, 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 well, yeah, yeah. wait, you don't get like free delivery from from them. When I was in Atlanta, uh, we got free delivery from Total Wine. If I haven't checked, I should probably check. Yeah, man, save yeah. you the drive. Yeah. So. It's... Anthony, this. <laughs> you walk in 
to your local girl who just recommended you this whiskey. And she pulls out a bottle of Baker's 7. What price does she have to say to get you to buy this bottle immediately? 10 bucks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I buy anything for 10 bucks. Um, man, it's hard to say because, you know, every time we go over this, I'm like, man, I don't have that kind of brain. So I'm <laughs> going to be all over the place. <laughs> and, and if anyone ever goes I, back and checks me, they're going to be like, this guy does not know what he's talking about. I have the because data. I have the data. Graph <laughs> charts will be here one day. Oh, Jesus Christ. See, I, it's all about how I'm feeling. and <laughs> It doesn't matter. Um, dude, I don't know. Because I think I could easily spend... I don't, I'm trying to think of what to compare it to. So I have a Woodford's Double Oaked right here. This is how, this is how I check myself. So what is a Woodford Double Oak worth? Does anybody 30, know? 35, right? A 53, I think, on Caskers. It looks like it's 53. <clears throat> Double oaked, not just Woodford's. Yeah. So it, this is like their nicer, their nicer thing, right? Oh, this is a 375 milliliter bottle. Total total wine sells a double oak to, that I was thinking about in my head, but they sell the mm. 375 milliliter for well, maybe 30 not. bucks. But yeah, 60 bucks essentially, 50 bucks. So the thing is, this is so much better than Woodford's Double Oaked. It has a much better smell, better color, better finish, better flavor, better everything. Mm. So I would easily spend like 75 bucks on Baker's. But saying that, I'm not surprised if it's worth like 175 250 And then I'm like, huh, I wonder. I'm thinking about it. I don't know. But I think I would, I, I would hope that it is 75 and if it's higher, I'm going to be sad. This is, I, I'm going to, I'm going to preface the reveal that I'll reveal in a bit with Anthony bought this bottle. So the fact that he doesn't remember what he bought it for is pretty <laughs> funny to me. <laughs> Wait a second. What do you mean I bought this bottle? Why would you give me a sample if I have it on my shelves? Because you didn't no, buy it for yourself. You didn't buy it. You bought it for I Eric. I gave it to Eric for his birth. No, buddy, Christmas. You did. Buddy, you did. This is the Christmas buddy. bottle, which, which, by the way, I'll go ahead and say, as a Christmas bottle, this no, is pretty freaking wait, good. Wait a second. Time out. Time out. You know what this means? This means that our relationship, I don't put a price on that love, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> I got you. you oh, it, wow. It, it, hey, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in for it. I'm in. <laughs> See, because like, if I was like, I give him $50 gifts, and that's it. That's just a $50 relationship right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what would you rate this? Like, where's your rating at then? It's hard to say because all I can think about is how Eric's mom used to give him $50 every year to buy me a per Christmas present. But for like seven years straight, he pocketed it uh, and just like took me to Chick-fil-A. And then eventually <laughs> his guilt built up so much that he shared that with me. And I was like, bro. And then I talked to his mom about it. Like a couple, like a year ago on the bourbon trail. And she was like, that is hilarious. <laughs> she just laughed. And I was like, this guy owes me so many Christmas Dude. presents or birthday presents. Hey, <laughs> I'm going to wow. go ahead and put it on record. I had saved up this money for a long time. And then my sister Dude, stole what? it. So, oh. so we lost all of it. And so that, blame my sister. She owes us money. She has all of it. Oh my god. I'd yell at her, but I know she could probably still kick my butt. <laughs> <laughs> she, I got you back, Anthony. She's a strong I got you woman. Back, Anthony. I got you back. Uh a rating, let's see. Um at least a six. I'm thinking Really. I'm thinking I should I should give it a solid I feel like I could go to maybe seven, but I'm so bad at this that I'm giving it a six. <laughs> a seven? I don't know, man. Okay. I'm telling you, I, I'm not good at the whole huh? ratings okay. and prices thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nah. okay. Okay. Don't judge me. <laughs> yeah. Your local <laughs> distillery is having a sale. Don't even give me the a story. Baker it's seven. $65. How so much? I, I want to hear $65. $65. $65. And with the $65, the, the rating is going to be a four. Really? Yeah. Yeah. 
Mm. I am impressed by their level of granularity in how they have come up with this flavor. However, the flavor itself is kind of lost in the actual alcohol uh, content of the actual spirit. I feel like there's a ton of burn on top of this, which is usually what I love, but there's nothing rich enough to last through it. It lives through like the very first few minutes, few seconds, few milliseconds of you sipping the bourbon. And then immediately, immediately after that, it's a alcoholic burn, which is not bad. The rye comes through and the corn, but vanilla lasts for maybe a millisecond, maybe two, and it is gone. See, this is where like I'm so different because to me, I was shocked that I could smell something good because most of the time I don't. And oh, then, I'm sure it smells. It's it smells awesome. Yeah. That's why it's still a four. <laughs> like I would I would say that this is like this is not an everyday drinker for me. I would not everyday drink this just for me. In oh, terms I would of my rating. Yeah, like yeah. I, I, I understand. I don't see much flavor either, mm-hmm. but I don't care about the flavor so much. Really? I care about the feeling. That's what's more important to me. And the feeling is really good and long lasting. And the flavor isn't like bothering me, which is weird. Cause like the Woodford's double oaked comparatively, uh-huh. the, the aftertaste and stuff is, is, is like bad compared to this. And that's why I'm like, this is, this is good. This is better than the double mm-hmm. oaked by far. Then we shall draw a line in the sand for I've wished for this thing to be tasty. And it is not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I I don't remember what the name of the company is, but this might really interest you, Nat. There is a bourbon uh, distiller, whatever you want to call them. They will put a wood like thing that is like spirally and cut in the bottle. Yeah. To further infuse it, and then you can even you like get to choose what goes in it, and you could add like. A vanilla stick or mm-hmm. something else i have that? a uh i have a i have a bottle of bourbon that's been infused with like rum cask with a oh. stick of rum i'll show I'll, you know that's what? really cool carry on <laughs> <laughs> he's uh he's off to grab the bottle i presume to to show us all how cool it is meanwhile eric is deep in thought he's ready he's warming up he's he's not sure he's trying to figure out the number he already knows the price. I do. I, che- I cheat on the price every week, guys. One of these days, they're going to bring one to the table, and I won't know the price. But unfortunately, <clears throat> I know the price. Dude, I'm so glad that I don't remember the name of the one I was talking about that I got just the other day. Because I'm gonna probably going to go get another bottle, or, or five, because of how cheap it is. And then... At one point, that is definitely going to get into some of these little uh, bottles that you gave us and and will be shared. Nice. And I was really surprised when I found out the other day that we can fly with bourbon. Yeah. Oh, that's the, I think that's Oak the exact Eden. company. Because that's yeah. exactly what the stick looks like. So Oak yeah. and Eden is, it is a rye and rumba. So it's rye whiskey finished with a rum soaked oak spiral. Yeah. They're really cool. I, I love Oak and Eden. They have some cool little flavor profiles to them. So was the flavor subtle or really strong? It's, flavor is really strong. Yeah. It, it, you because know, you it's might need to taste in. it right now. Just it's been, it's, it's been soaking in this for a very long time now. Yeah. Because like I originally got this for my birthday. Oh, okay. Uh, last year. Oh, so it's wow. been in this for like a year. So you can prevent a bottle from going away in two nights. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, actually, you know what? Yep, there you go. That's we do it live. We do That's it live. Right. Man, so, so yeah, surely like, these I, guys I immediately will... I immediately like this one. Well, it's, this one's a little bit more. This one's very woody. I wonder mm-hmm. why. Like maybe because the oak stay that's in this freaking bottle. I'll go. I'll go ahead and put it out there. I think, man, it's gonna be cool. So, the price mm. of this bottle MSRP is right around sixty dollars. Dang, I'm really? good, dude. I'm so right around sixty dude, I dollars. I spent like one hundred and fifty dollars on your grift. I don't know. <laughs> well, you got me other stuff too. This wasn't the only. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <laughs> 
<laughs> but <laughs> man, sixty that's bucks. Good. That's really good for sixty bucks. This yeah. does not taste good. This does not taste good, right? Oh now. no, oh, man, is no, it too no. long? I think it's gone too long. Well, oh, no, 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 I don't think it's gone too long. It's just very woody. Yeah, and there's not, and, and the rum is like kind of blended under the whiskey, so it's just like Ooh. it's just. I bad. also just, saw, depending on how long you've had it, that there was more air in the bottle than whiskey, which means the, yeah. the oxid oxidation process speeds up as you get more and more air inside of that bottle. Oh, which means that you can have some off flavors kind of present themselves. Man, this Baker's is really good. I really enjoy this one. I get a lot of that cinnamon and vanilla sweetness with hints of like cherry that kind of lasts through this dry heat that I really enjoy. This is a drier bourbon. I don't think a lot of bourbons tend to be as dry as this one. It's not like a wine or a white wine, but it has some of that saliv like makes you salivate a little after mm. you've had it because of how dry it makes your mouth. Mm. But yeah, that almost it, it almost reminds me of a coffee at the end where you get this vanilla and like burned style of flavor that I think is coming from that charred oak at mm. the end that I, I just absolutely love. This definitely beats out a five. This might be the first one that I rate above Nat of the entire podcast. I I think I'm I'm up there. I I wanted oh. to say six, He's but the emotional. more it develops, the more I enjoy it. I I I don't He's know emotional. if it matches my sevens. So oh. I'm gonna give this a healthy six point five. I'll just yeah. stay down here in the Guys, gutter with everybody yeah. else. Y'all have no idea how taste. proud I am of, of picking a bourbon that, that he would like. Yeah, this is, <laughs> nice. this is a phenomenal. Like, like, this is very close, by the way. We're going to have an... I'm going to introduce them to another bourbon. So this same company does the... Um, the, the what's it called line? The, um, uh, the Knob oh, Creek. Man. For example, oh. and so you have like the Knob Creek 12 year and stuff like that that are kind of similar to this style of flavor and also really, really good. But this almost reminds me of the Russell's Reserve 10 years that are the single barrels that are really, really nice, which I'm going to introduce these guys to at some point. Obviously, Russell's Reserve is kind of the new craze for affordable bourbons that is probably better than its price point would indicate. And I think this falls under the same category. They have similar flavor profiles. I think the Russell's Reserve 10-year single barrel might beat this out by a hair. But if you like that bourbon, I, I think this one is worth, worth a try. A lot of cool flavors here. Man. Yeah, I, I think this was a very good uh, pick, mm. Anthony. Great, great choice. Wonderful mm. present. I am going to enjoy the rest of, the of this bottle. You sit on, Eric. Mm. Hey, I love so, so cherry is also my favorite fruit. So when I get that real cherry flavor, that ups it a little bit too. But disgusting, disgusting. <laughs> cherry is flavored water. <laughs> so, Anthony, what have you what have you been playing this week, dudes? Dude, I can't even remember if I played Hell Divers. I definitely tried to. You, because it's an amazing game and i'm so excited uh, one of the things i'm looking forward to is also hell divers because guess what they're coming out with vehicles and mechs dude there i saw the mech release that is so dope that's gonna be so cool yeah but huge. um unfortunately hell divers is kind of difficult to make content with <laughs> so uh, I don't know you know, what you're talking about. I mean, uh, I mean, anyone that's been watching my shorts knows that if I'm playing with Nat and Eric, it's easy to make content with. <laughs> but if you're playing alone, if you're playing alone, it's a it's kind of a challenge. Um, True. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to add some chaos and stuff like that. Um, I think I I tried to play a little Sea of Thieves, but man, like 
my internet's honestly not that bad. It goes in and out, but Sea of Thieves makes it really bad. They have some terrible net code. So with the tiniest bit of packet loss, you're just jittering all over the place. Yes. It's sad. It's <clears throat> bad. It's it, like they're doing some good things with that game, but they still haven't gotten the basics right. Um, and that's net code. But yeah. the best game that I played, <laughs> good thing he's not here. He's not going to yell at me. <laughs> is uh, Star Citizen. Um, so Star Citizen is like Sea of Thieves right now, where it's very much a sandbox, which a sandbox is great for making content with. So I played with my wife the other day, and we actually had a decent amount of fun, uh, though there were some technical difficulties. Uh, <laughs> and go watch but, his new short, by the way. It was, it, it was pretty funny. Yeah, my new short is Star Citizen with my wife, and it's the best short I've had in the past... 10 days, 10 shorts, which I'm really happy about because uh, Star Citizen is like the game for me. If I'm playing a game by myself, that's what I want to play. And I expect that it's going to be like the game that you basically, you know, like how World of Warcraft is like the game. Like there's so many people that play it and they've been playing it forever. I believe that Star Citizen is going to be the next game like that. And probably the first one for sci-fi. Uh, some people might argue that Destiny is kind of that, but it's it, it's so one-dimensional that I would disagree. Like, it, there's not much going on there. Like, there's a very specific thing you're doing, and they have not expanded it. While Star Citizen's trying to do, like, everything under the sun, and that's really cool. Um, so, yeah, we, we had a lot of fun with that. Um, should I... I have a few other things on here. Should I just go through them? The, yeah. Uh, okay, so... First off, there's this Ikea desk, under desk thing that's, like, made for gamers that I got the other day at Ikea. Okay. It's really great. It's re There's really awesome features. But the thing that blows my mind is that on the back, there's this, like, Ikea system for putting things on walls where you, like, latch things to it and, and hang everything. Like a pegboard? Like a, almost like a pegboard, but made for their stuff and made for gamers to put all their stuff on the wall or whatever right. it's on the back of this freaking drawer like it's, it's just a, there's there's wheels but what am i gonna do with that i don't know Interesting. I, and i and they didn't show any examples i was just like okay well there's other parts of this thing that are so great that i had to get it because i have an old like ten dollar ikea under desk shelf and the the, the drawers fall off and, and right now they're on the floor because they fall off and I'm just done with it. So I'm finally going to put this thing together and, and that's oh, pretty nice. great. I know I have figured out what, what desk I'm going to get next and it is mm. the Secret Labs Magnus Pro. This thing Ooh. is so cool it's just because you're talking about desks and, and I, I definitely need a new desk but this one looks so cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, Secret Lab does really good things. I think I think they make the best uh, cheaper gaming chairs. Of course, Herman yeah. Miller makes the best chair you can ever buy, and everyone yeah. should get that because it'll save you a lot of money in medical bills. If you're... Uh, it's And it's hard to beat. I think both me and Anthony have the same one. Like You can see it here if you're watching the yeah. video on the YouTubes, but like and subscribe yeah. below. But the in-body chair is just wonderful, and... I remember sitting at a desk all day. I know both me and Anthony do a lot of development and coding and math, but yeah. if you're sitting in a chair for all hours of the day, you need to go to hermanmiller.com, sponsors, by the way, uh, and get a nice chair. Investing in your health is one of the best things you can do. Yeah, and, and so many people don't believe it, and, and they don't understand it. They're like, it's not worth it. It's a chair. And you're going to have way more expensive bills when your health starts to deteriorate. Um, My health has already started to de deteriorate from sitting all day, and I can't sit in a normal chair anymore. But I can actually still sit in this chair all day, <clears> despite <throat> those sitting in a chair medical issues that I have. And... It's just crazy. It's hard to explain, it, but if your company won't buy it for you, you got to save up for this and bring it to work. It, it's also it's check insane. if you're some companies do a health stipend. 
that yeah. allows you to use money for health benefit reasons. Not all of them allow you to do it, but some of them I think you can use to buy chairs if you're working in a chair because of your job. Dude, the ch the freaking oh man, Secret Lab is so cool. The desk you want, you can get a freaking Attack on Titan variation. Yeah, that is so cool. They do like the. I'm wondering if that's like an a desk mat or or what. Like it. Yeah, it's I a magnetic it a death mat, desk mat. It just. Did you say magnetic? The whole system is magnetic, so the entire that's surface cool. of the table is magnetic, so that whenever you put stuff on there, their attachments and stuff, it just clicks on, just all magnetic. That's really cool. Oh man, the Night City one, Cyberpunk just has like a map of Night City on it. Oh. Yeah, it's it, it like this this desk is so cool. I saw it because of Mr. Who's the Boss. I don't know if you've seen any of his videos mm. on YouTube, but he did a review of his workstation in one of his videos. And he essentially reviews products on YouTube. That's what he does. And he looked through a number of desks. And without being sponsored by Secret Labs, this is the one where he was like, this is it. This is the desk that I have went through all of these desks. This is it. This is the best one. And it's really cool. And the attachments that it has are really nice. Dude, so. and speaking of cyberpunk, I just started watching a cyberpunk themed anime called... Uh, Metal Roge, I think is what it's called. Have you heard of Metal Roge? Either of you heard of Metal Roge? I don't think I have. Okay, so I don't know if it's a new anime or what. It was just Crunchyroll was like, watch this. Oh, I've heard of this. Yes. And I was like, and maybe one of you guys can give me a recommendation because when I sat down to eat my lunch this t t this morning, <laughs> when I sat down to eat lunch today, I was like, I want to watch something that'll inspire me to work out. But and, and a really good thing like is uh what is it naruto's really good at that dragon ball z is okay at that um my hero academia is kind of good at it but there's certain animes that just make you want to go and do something physical arcane just infuriates me makes me want to you know beat someone up so <laughs> that's kind of good at it that's fair so i was looking for that and Metallic Rouge looked interesting, and I was like, okay, I'll watch a couple episodes, and it's good. I like it. I'm going to keep watching it. Um, it's very interesting and very, like, Star Citizen-esque, so might give me some content creation ideas here and there. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to more. Um, Ash might be watching it right now, my wife. She, she liked the first episode, and, you know, we have the rule, any anime you watch, you have to watch the first two episodes. You can't just watch one. That's a... That's yeah, a, that's, you, you kind of can. If I, if I watched only the first episode of My Hero Academia, I wouldn't have watched any more of it. I think if you watch the first episode of My Girlfriends Who Really, 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 lo really Love You and it's not for you, you're probably not going to like the second episode. I think there are cases where it goes both ways. Like, Ari's ReZero is a different Ari. show after episode two. That's for sure. Don't, don't start with that loaded question. That, that one you that's, have, that's literally have to. Two parts. It's a two part episode for the first episode. It so is. Don't you, don't it lie. is. They don't, don't tell lie. you that though. When you go to watch it on certain platforms, they don't say yeah. part one and part two. They're just like episode one, episode now, two. With and that, so. Anthony, do you have any more games? No more games, man. Just been watching solo leveling, Demon Slayer. There's this really great show about Dick Turpin. Oh my God. If anyone watches the Great British Baking Show, the guy that looks like Snape has his own comedy show now. And it is awesome. Oh <laughs> it is God. so good. It is so good. But yeah, that's about it. I'm just looking forward to Helldivers, mechs, and vehicles and stuff. So, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude, I, I think that segues perfectly into my segment, Nat, if you don't Go mind me going Go first this time. Because Go for it. For better or for worse, whenever I have a judo tournament, I end up being at the gym more and I don't get as much time to play games. So this this week hasn't been an eventful gaming week for me. I tried out some old classics like magic the gathering arena uh which i tried out because one of my friends is obsessed and 
made it all the way to essentially the highest rank you could make it. And he knows literally nothing about magic and has brute forced the system by just playing oh, an insane no. amount. <clears throat> and it's hilarious because he barely knows any of the terms. So he talks about magic as if it's an abstract concept. It's I was in this amazing. I was, I was in this conversation. One of in a fourth party, another friend goes and stops him, and he says, "That's called a chump block, dude." A yes, chump block. He like doesn't know the terms. It's it's hysterical. This guy started playing Magic this year, and is has essentially nearly made it to the top thousand in Magic: The Gathering arena every month for the past like three months. Oh, and for those that know, if you're supposed to have a sixty card deck. His deck is like 400 cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he made it to the top 1,000 with a 200-card deck. Which is not supposed to work. <laughs> yeah. Statistically, it's not supposed to work. What Dude, do you he... The real, look, the real truth is, he's a freaking genius, and he okay. knows what he's doing. Yeah, you know? the guy's wait, one wait, of the wait, smartest wait, wait, guys wait, we've wait, ever wait, met. Wait, so, like, how do you statistically account for... He has the, the, all the, the cards... He has so every he really answer. Likes, he no, really likes milling land. himself and stuff, you know? Oh, okay. You wait, gotta wait, remember, yeah. he's but brute but forcing you this. Have, you have to have land. You have to have land to be able to mill yourself, though. It doesn't matter if you play 4,000 games in a week. Like. Oh, my God. Uh, all, all that said, so I, I, of course, he's been talking about okay. it a lot. We have a, we have okay. a game night every Monday where we play Gloomhaven, and so... Every Gloomhaven is us talking about magic because three of the people who play it have been playing magic all of our lives, essentially. And he is like, oh, yeah, I'm one of the best magic players in the world, but I just started. And I'm like, this is nonsense. And then he's like, oh, I use a 200 card deck. And we're like, you, what are, you are a problem <laughs> in this society. Like, <laughs> so almost more than well, no, and then he just laughs the and then he just laughs. Deck. Yeah, he Disgusting. just he breaks all he doesn't follow any of the deck building rules at all. He wow. doesn't he doesn't net deck, by the way, for anybody out there. Net decking is where you look online for the best decks and then just use those. He custom makes all of his decks from scratch. He does not use a net deck. He makes it to the top thousand with a 200 card monstrosity. Disgusting. It's nonsense, but so, me and my girl, or me and my wife, I can't Whoa, believe I almost said like, girl over there. Me and my wife have. I wonder let's what just she, clear, let's just so, go clip right here. Say yeah, it, yeah was, say it again. Me, me and, on the couch. Oh my gosh. So, me and my wife recently started, and she's never seen it before. I have only seen up to a certain watch part, which what? I'll talk about. Watch We've what? started what? Attack on Titan now that the full thing's done. We're Wait, on. You've never watched it? I have read it. I have read it up to a certain point. I only ever watched the first two seasons and oh, okay. I read the manga and kept up with it until they did the Levi time, time rewind and started doing his history. And so mm. that was right after the basement. Mm. Buddy. So you missed, there's been a. I know. Bit. I know. I know. But now. I am we're so we've caught up in the last week we've caught up we're on the last season Jesus Christ wow what that was doing fast in time Jesus, yeah. what I think it's going to end up being uh my wife's favorite anime I'm fairly certain uh because she okay. has not been as driven to watch one as this one um I can't wait to see how y'all feel when you finish it yep. yeah uh, so we're on the I want to know yeah we're on the final <laughs> season know. So we I need to hear your guys' uh, takes on yeah. this ending because you, yeah, I'm in. You're, you're just, in we, we just can't in say anything. It. We're in for it. We can't say anything. So I am. Uh, we're on the it's last part. Ride. They just had spoiler warning for the last season of Attack on Titan, which y'all have both seen, right? All the way through. A hundred percent. Okay. Okay. Watched in red. Spoiler warning. We just got to the point where Sasha died. Oh, which was yeah. the, the potato eater. Yeah, which was heart wrenching. That, that was a rough, sad. rough moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so spoiler warning on. So we're continuing from there and we should be done. I imagine we'll finish finish it probably this weekend or next week. 
but it's been super super fun i love so just for anybody who doesn't know the parts that i knew about were up to the last season so only the last season is new stuff for me just for reference so they have okay. three seasons the basement and then the fourth season is after the basement essentially the, you talk about the fourth season as, as if there are other seasons that don't follow immediately that are them basically milking the ending. <laughs> well, yeah. The, so the fourth season is a 26 episode season with two that movies give, after that, that. Released in different parts across multiple years. Oh, yeah. Let oh, yeah. Said, yeah. Speak I'm of one... my tribe's tribulation. Yeah, it's God rough. Fakes. Well, this is the reason I stopped reading it, too, because if anybody doesn't know, after the basement, they had a few more chapters up until uh, 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 some things happen. And then they do a time skip like every anime on the market. That time skip in real life was also like very long uh, t two years or some nonsense yes. and they started releasing levi's chapters as part of the main manga which is when i started reading not that levi isn't an amazing character they just did a lot of history during that time that i didn't want to wait a week to read an ex uh, like a, a like a, an excerpt yeah an excerpt informational Sorry, dump yeah, yeah. And then come back and essentially waiting a week every for like a year doing that. I was just like, ah, OK, they're going to do a time skip and then they're going to continue the great story that I want to finish. I'm going to wait until it's done. Well, now they've finished all of the anime and I'm like, OK, now I'm going to finish the anime. And I think just on record. Attack on Titan is one of the few mangas where the anime, in my opinion, is more enjoyable than the manga. I attack think. on titan yeah i think the attack on titan anime beats the manga in my opinion pretty heavily yes yeah and yeah. not a lot of wise it's just completely different meat it's a completely different experience oh yeah. agreed agreed it is in a completely different genre in my opinion too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as action-packed in the manga as you yeah. assume like like you don't get levi taking apart the beast titan yeah. in the way that the anime depicts it oh you don't you don't get uh reiner's speech in the same gravity as yeah. you do from the anime so yeah i like the i can't yeah. and i never read this in the manga but i can't imagine like hearing reiner's voice actor like break Shut down up. when he's when they're when they meet again when aaron and him meet again underneath the stage and reiner's yeah. voice actor is like cracking oh not Ryan, not Reiner. Right. what's his name uh oh leader. erwin 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 erwin's speech not reiner oh speech. yeah erwin's speech is just, just oh screw reiner let's just get that get that oh. right to the point I hate Reiner. I know he's what? necessary. I hate Reiner. Uh, I feel show up, show up to the plate the first time or don't show up at all. Hey, 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 you chill with this nonsense. He hasn't switched back or anything for me yet. I don't even know what Nat's talking about, to be honest, and I've seen all of it. Oh, OK. So, Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure what he's talking about. And Maybe he missed something. No, don't spoil anything. No, it's, it's part of it's part of like the initial it's like it's in season three. Where it comes out that like he literally like he fell into this because he he like he wanted it. Right. Oh, yeah. He wanted it. So he took it pretty much. And so he showed up to the plate and then he was found wanting. And then that created the schism. And he had to do a little mental vacay to go ahead and get over it. Like, I'm, and then even after that, he is still the reluctant. He's a soldier. broken man. He's a broken man. And I, and I don't support his, uh, his support. I don't support his support. Yeah. Okay. But even taking into account what he does to the series, for those of you guys who have read, taking into account, I still think he's a bitch. 
<laughs> but yeah, that's that's what that, that's been a lot of my week. It's been judo, Attack on Titan, and a little bit of Magic the Gathering Arena when I only have like fifteen to twenty minutes here and there. So that's all I got for y'all this week. Nat, what have you been playing? I have been playing Hell Divers. Yeah. Yeah, we know. We know. I've been playing level are you? Divers? Yeah, what level I'm are you? Guys, like, like, have you maxed out? What is the max no, level, and no, how no, long ago did you no. reach it? No, is what we need because, to know. And let, and let me make this very clear for everybody who plays Hell Divers and probably understands what I'm going through. I'm on. I'm at level 19. Holy everybody, crap! Everybody knows what level 20 means for a Hell Diver. It means you have access to some next level stuff like the rail cannon and stuff that you want right the rail gun the rail the orbital rail cannon the shield backpack um there's all sorts of other things that's probably included in there and i'm sure they're probably going to make the vehicles become like level 30 level 40 or whatever but i've been wanting to use this rail gun for since Ever. before last week we talked Since about before. this last week I, and you were I like wanted, i need the rail gun and not i kid you not i was like okay after the podcast i'm gonna play a little bit of this play a little of this game get to level 20 i'm gonna play the rail gun i'm gonna go ahead and blow some things up it's gonna be great you know what i woke up to this morning oh, no. a nerf to the rail gun oh, oh no. no right before you get it Oh. And you know they, said? they were like, "Oh, the flamethrower can kill kind of some of the some of the same things in the same way." And I'm like, "That's not what I signed up for." Oh, so I don't know if you man. noticed, but uh, Jason posted a link. He was like, "This is for the nerds like me who want to read a blog post of the dev philosophy behind the nerf." I get it. Like, what? It, okay, I haven't read it. But in my opinion, and this is something that I've taken from Destiny into every single game that I've ever played, I do not think that the first option to adjusting the balance of a game is to decrease the power of what is currently working. Unless it is obviously broken, I do not believe it should be brought down. Do I think there should, that it should be adjusted? Absolutely. Maybe like uh, adjust the fire rate or adjust like the ammo, but don't take away the power of it. Make the other things just as competitive in terms of power. Or kind of come up with a different idea of what your power plateau is going to be like, go ahead and approach every single weapon in this market, because now. I, I, I can't think of any gun that operates like the rail cannon that takes care of some of the issues that uh, I feel like a lot of us run into. Like a flamethrower is not going to stop a Hulk Titan, but a rail cannon was supposed to be good for that. Right. And I'm sure like you can, you can go ahead and argue like there's the rail cannon, there's the orbital laser for those kind of things. I get that. But in terms of if you are a solo player and you have only four stratagems to drop in somewhere and you're looking for a go-to build i don't know what you're going to do if you run into these things anymore hmm. now that's not that is also to say i don't know how far nerfed the rail gun is i don't know if it's still able to take out these uh hulk titans in like two shots or anything like that but i'm a little sad that pretty much once i hit 20 i'm going to get the rail cannon after the after a nerf which is unfortunate and then they also killed the breaker which i'm cool with i'm totally cool with it was a absurdly strong starter weapon like it is nutty what the breaker was able to kind of get you out of there was there were situations where i would get dropped into like a field of uh, bugs and i would just spin and hold down the right trigger and i'd be fine and I'd be like cool problem solved so I understand that that being that needed to be a little reined in, but I, I'm just going to mourn a little bit for the rail gun. I didn't even get to use it, you know, I definitely feel and I don't know if the rail gun, I, I'm not speaking to the rail gun in particular here, but mm -hmm. more to the conceptual idea of nerfs in general, because I think mm -hmm. it's always interesting when developers feel they have to nerf or buff something 
And mm -hmm. oftentimes they're doing it on a statistical state where the numbers are very directly saying, hey, there's an issue here. And then the developers have to figure out an abstract way to solve an issue. And oftentimes developers take the tweaking of numbers so to solve that mm -hmm. rather than thinking about how do we keep the fun of this mm -hmm. thing and change it in a way that isn't just numerically making it better yes. or worse so it, it mm -hmm. sounds like they might have made this more fun so i was reading this article that jason's shared and the hilarious part is while you're talking about the philosophy of things Nat, yeah the dude's intro is literally addressing that like he's talking to you and apologizing and saying like i'm sorry man but i hope you can get get through this with me i'm still gonna get it's, through it yeah it's absolutely. hilarious because i felt like you're talking and he's trying to talk to you directly i'm like this guy's like, psychic. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but I'm, I'm like, reading about the rail, the railgun <laughs> specifically. They're saying that it was too strong in safe mode. They're like in safe mode, you're only supposed to be able to take out medium targets and oh, stuff like that from range. Safe mode, mode, you're a pansy. You should play that thing on any unsafe mode. Th so I that's what they're. Play, he's saying that gun. he's saying it's still in uh, an anti tank weapon, a heavy uh, killer weapon in unsafe mode. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it sounds like it got m made more fun because you know, there's okay. like it was too easy to use. He's like, you can, you, if you're gonna take yeah, out the big guy, just, it's gotta be dangerous. It should be something to it. Okay. So well, maybe I love it. I love the game again. I'm back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the rest of the nerfs. I mean, but <laughs> you guys better get good at counting for three seconds because that's as long as you can hold it before it blows up on you. Oh God. <laughs> Really? Yeah, you get three. Oh, you nuts. get three seconds, and then after three seconds, it blows up on you. Yeah, oh, I, man. I definitely, I'm hoping this weekend isn't as crazy. Uh, well, it won't be as crazy as last weekend. So I'm hoping I, I get wonder. to revisit Hell Divers again this weekend, since I didn't yeah, get to do far. anything this past weekend outside of judo. It was literally wake up, deal with do judo all day, wake up again, do judo all day. So y'all have fun. But yes, oh, no. this weekend I'm hoping I'll be able to play and. Uh, uh, obviously not catch up to Nat's ins insane 19 level, but yeah, guys, well, you I gotta get, you gotta get to the point where you have the, you have to have the rail cannon. I don't understand why you, yeah. sorry, sorry, the rail gun. You, I don't understand why you feel as if you can play the game without the rail rail gun. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally a rail gun. It uh, takes a, cool. it takes an article of probably metallic nature and slings it through the air through the use of electromagnetic magnets. It's just oh, that was pretty. That's I'm sorry, cool. electromagnets. It's just it's so, just super cool, man. So outside of Hell Divers Two, Nat, <laughs> what are you looking forward to? Like, I'm what is the next to. thing on the list? Do you have anything else besides Hell Divers Two? The rail gun. I know, <laughs> right? It's a rail gun. Did you hear me? Did you hear what I said? It was a rail gun. There's no such thing as not Hell Divers Two right now. <laughs> I know. I'm I'm looking forward to Dune Messiah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I Dune Messiah is gonna be looks gonna be special, dude. Uh, I can't wait either. Yeah, I mean that's gonna be part two. I haven't. We have not. Eric? I have not wow. yet. I, that, Nat, I have literally... It came out, what, Honestly, on Friday? Dude, this is something that I... I like, I was like, oh, maybe I'll try to go to an IMAX, but, like, the last IMAX I went to was unimpressive. Why I... Do I, have friends? I want to watch it at home. <laughs> Wait, what? Why do, I, why do I have friends? Why do I have <laughs> friends? Well, you know, if you live if near us... Watch the sacred text. Why don't you Wait, go you with seen us? It? I thought you, you said you're looking forward to it. I am looking forward to Dune Messiah. 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 Oh, was that part is three? The sequel to yeah. part two. Yes. Part one Dude. and part two are the first yeah. book, and then Dune so, Messiah wait, okay, is the wait. sequel. It's the name. Well, I mean? to be fair, it's the name of the so, the book, not the the movie. So we now, don't know what they're going to call it. You saw it in theaters. How was your experience? How was your How was your experience watching theater it in experience? Yeah. Okay, so. I, I hope I don't get a lot of flack for this. I don't think I will. Um, the actual aspect ratio of it, I feel is too wide. I'm like, I'm having to look over here to go in certain <laughs> scenes to actually find yeah. out like if I'm getting the full field of vision, but which like, is kind of cool because like if you have like a full panoramic screen and you're looking to the side, that could be cool. But I'm in a rectangle. 
and it's at an angled like there's a clear 90 degree angle straight in front of me so as soon as i hit that wall i've already broken my my line of focus i'm like immediately looking to another wall and it's just it's too much of a shift for me so for those theaters who have decided to go ahead and just utilize the size of their uh walls as a um stand-in screen um don't just just don't get a full aspect if you can, uh, because I feel I, I understand it might be more cost effective. I understand that the technology might eventually get to the point where that becomes like a full like as like full experience. But for me, I was like, fuck this. Up. I'm not I'm I'm not even close to fully immersed in those scenes. Dude, like, see, like that, 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 that just that adds to said, my my yeah. thought that theaters are like antiquated they are no. they are not no. No, keeping no, no, no. up that, that is, is not to they say are bad that is not to say that the theaters are antiquated like the idea that you can go to an area and experience the movie as it's supposed to be experienced I no totally, you can't i, I think no, you're getting not, a better I'm experience not, in houston I'm not saying, i think you I'm might be not, getting a better experience maybe. i might i might i'm not saying that it's not possible in in a theater. I'm just saying that the current theater experiences that we have now do not match what I think they could be. Oh, a hundred percent. If you yeah. look at the, some of the tech that has been released for movie theaters that mm -hmm. could exist at more movie theaters, but doesn't because movie theaters aren't putting money into making themselves better. They're only getting enough money to stay afloat. Therefore, they're not investing in tech and they're not improving the tech that they have at these movie theaters. I have a theater that's doing pretty good, though. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Pretty good uh, that, is that's different. That's the important though. part. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, like, so the IMAX I it. went to in Atlanta, yeah. like, you, I, I think I watched Dune and there's certain scenes where there's mostly one color, right? Mm hmm. And then, oh, look, there's dirt lines yeah. on the entire screen. Yeah. Just I don't pillars have that. of dirt. I'm like, yeah what you know it's just ugh. okay and then there's so, a crying baby in the corner you know like, it's just like that, have y'all people that's not that's not screen have y'all seen the new tech for screen x no. that regal oh, wait, no i had i had screen x i had screen x did you did you have that for dune yes for dune for dune part two. Oh man so yeah i there it's are cool. it's a cool idea Wait, but it it, it it doesn't launch. It's like, not great. Screen, I've ha screen I did is like when you have the screen and then you have the screens that go off to the side yeah, as well. I see that. Yeah. yeah. And Dude. like the aspect changes depending Dude, on the scene. I did this 10 years ago. I No, not 10 years ago. I did this when the bourbon we drank today was born. Okay. I had a triple monitor 1080p setup and Anthony. I did that whole surround thing Anthony, and it's not you good. Didn't have, Anthony, you didn't have it at the size nor at the grade that they're no, no, having no. to do. The right? size is, is uh -huh. just dependent on how close you are to the screen. A t I, an, an iPhone can be just as good of an experience as a movie theater no. if you've got it propped up right no. here in front of your eyes no. and it's and it's the exact same no. resolution it's no. all about resolution and distance true i honestly think though that movie theaters if you take into account the fact that you could get that resolution and and the scale of it 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 gives the medium the gravitas that it should probably have at this point like if i go to a theater and i'm going to see a movie like dude. dune if i don't like if i'm not feeling as if i am witnessing an a like almost a one-to-one -one life experience of me watching the movie as if i was there I don't want to I don't want to have particles in my face or anything like that. Don't sling water at me, but like give me the highest quality video that you possibly can on the screen and make it cinematograph uh make it cinematograph cine cinematographic uh, cinematographic cinematographically uh as impactful as possible and I'd go to a the I'd go to a theater for any of the big movies as, if I could. See, I think we're talking a lot about the visual and while I would tend to agree, uh, well, I think the that there's an argument well. to be made of which visual can or cannot be better and which environment can or cannot be better. Mm -hmm. I will say, though, there is nobody... 
they can put the type of money into a sound system as like, the yeah. nicer theaters you can. True. And that the is the is only one that I think you could say is objectively better in some theaters because they have multi-million dollar sound systems in some of them where they're, yeah. you know, they have a, an Atmos setup that has yeah. professional quality. What is it? 84 different speakers or whatever it is for yeah. a true Atmos. You know but the sad thing to me is like, people are like, go watch Dune, go watch Dune. They're not, but there's no one saying you need to watch Dune in Regal Screen X. It is worth I it. I think it. I honestly, though, like people aren't people, doing that. Well, there aren't enough people are doing it. It's implied. It's implied. It's either implied, and they're and they're. they're, they're, they're I don't they're think snobs. that's the case. Obviously, I don't think that's the case. It's implied, and if it's and if it's if they're not snobs. They're trying to get you to watch the movie, right? No, 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 no. But here's the thing: how many? I don't think. And if we were to consider the number of people who've seen Dune, let's say it's a million, right? Okay. It's or Dune 2. I know it's doing that, a lot okay. better, but just to make numbers easy, let's say a million people are going to see Dune 2. Okay. I think maybe 10 of them are seeing it in a Screen X theater because of how many Screen X theaters there are. So there's no way True. you're going to hear mm -hmm. people talking about Screen X. And you're, there's no True. way you're going to hear people talking about Atmos. 99.999% of the people that are actually going to a theater to see Dune are seeing it in a crappy theater where it's cheapest because theaters cost too much right now for the experience you're getting. You're paying 40, 50 bucks a person sometimes for snacks, a drink, and a two-hour experience. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody no. really wants to pay that much for a two-hour experience. You can buy the movie for half of that exactly. when it comes out. And you and know watch what? watch it as many times as you want. Yeah. And comfortably in your home, in your pajamas, no crying babies unless they're your own. I'm not going to lie, though. I missed the theater. This this experience made me like realize really? that I missed it. Yeah. See, I think you must have a really good me, theater. It made me feel like I was a kid again. Hmm. Like it's going to see this was like cool. It, it also helps that I went to see it with my dad and my older son oh, and my older sister. Yeah, but. And it was one of those moments where I, I could look back and forth between my my two compatriots and like they were reacting to the movie like I was reacting to Dude, it. It's and like so the, dope. The, the sound was there. The visuals were there. Like we were all it was That's everybody cool. in the theater was having a good time and you could feel it like you can't beat that. You're, I know you, I agree with that, but I don't think everybody gets that experience now unless you're no. going to a super popular well, movie like, in a super populated city with true. people that you care about and can have lasting connections with about that movie. Yeah, so like that, like everybody. growing yeah. up, Eric and I went to the movie theater all the time. Like that was what we did. It was at least me and him and then whoever else. Mm -hmm. And and that was great. And then over the years, and maybe it's an Atlanta thing or it's probably everywhere. And, and maybe you're lucky. I don't know. We we would start complaining. We were like, dude, what's wrong? Like, this is gross. Like the floor is sticky. Like the screen is bad. The it. It cut out. It the, the movie's not playing anymore, mm -hmm. and, and it's just there's there's just problem after problem after problem, and then COVID hits and things start releasing say, immediately. Yeah, yeah. And Eric and I are like, I really hope they keep doing this. This is great. Like we don't have to suffer with these crappy movie theaters anymore. Even uh -huh. our expensive IMAX ones, even the ones where you have dinner there. We went we went out of our way yeah. to go to the theaters where we're like you have to pay more. You nice. buy dinner, yeah. and it's it's still gross. It's actually worse because guess what? Yeah. There's food everywhere. There's not, yeah, and there's not a discreet way to do things. They have a freaking server just walking in front of you while mm -hmm. you're immersed in the best part of the movie. Now you're not immersed because you're watching the person walk past you. Right. And it's just like, mm, but I will say, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go I'm ahead. wondering. So some people are saying like the best reason to own an Apple Vision is for the movie experience. What if eventually you go to a theater and you're not watching a screen anymore? You're sitting down and everyone's putting on the headset. It's not the same. Yeah, I do feel like there's a disconnect there, even though I agree for at home cases, yeah. like having yeah. a screen like that's that is going to be amazing. It's going to be huge. Yeah. But I think we're going to have to continue this in the, the next movie. I, I We have to let Nat <laughs> go we're, be we're, we're a better person. I have to go be a better person, guys. I'm so, so sorry. 
With that said, <laughs> sorry, Eric just called this a movie. <laughs> yes, I did. It's technically maybe probably a movie, yeah, but it's unscripted. some people are going to look at it like a movie. But we're with that said, yet. we're going to continue with our Flaviar adventure next week. Yeah. Make sure to go down in the comments, like and subscribe and comment some whiskeys. Nobody's commenting any whiskeys that uh, we should try yet. I want to try to get mm. somebody to do that soon so that we have some. Thank you to everybody who's been watching the episodes. We have some regular watchers and a bunch of shorts views. The views are going back up again. Oh, yeah. Thank you all for that again. Thank and catch a little extra gaming content yeah. on Boardman. Yeah. yeah. With yeah, these yeah, guys, yeah, there's a pretty funny one where I accidentally killed Nat the other day. <laughs> and he's on the uh, channel linked at the top, so you, you can go check him out there. Again, st life has been busy still working on other videos and more content outside of the Tap Haven podcast. But we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Peace. Bye.